This is significantly better than most things I film on my iPhone. $10, $15 for the clamp, $10, $15 for the stand. Easy. You know, sometimes in life there's lots of stray things happening, and sometimes those happy accidents are the best part of what you see. Yo, what is going on, Mogo? My name is Ted, and today we are talking about top-down photography or videography. How do you get shots that look like this? So, we're gonna be going over how to do this shot, and to do this, I got my buddy Casey McBeth over here. Get over here. Hey, how's it going, man? What's up? Casey, of course, returned to the show. Uh, Casey, what is the normal camera that you usually use? Um, so, I purchased an FX9. Cool! So we are actually going to use this for the first time ever in any Mogul Really? Episode. We are! We're oh gonna use this camera! <laughs> However, if you're watching this and you do not have a camera this size, we are also gonna show you how to deal with shots like that with your iPhone, and shots like this with a DSLR, and we're also gonna show you how to do a top-down rig with a larger camera like an Alexa, a RED, or even the Sony FX9, which we have here today. So, three different ways to rig cameras, three different ways to get top-down shots, and let's do this. You ready? Hell yeah. Okay, so, real quick, because I'm a lighting nerd, and because we are super dorky here, we went ahead and lit this because we were so excited and had too much fun doing it, and we got carried away. But if you're curious about what the lighting is in this actual shot, Casey, you wanna walk it through what actually happened here? Yeah, absolutely. So I think a big part of any top-down shot is trying to make it look nice, and not only is that staging, not only is that rigging, but it's also lighting. So what we did is we brought in a large diffusion so we could have some soft lighting coming from you know, the best direction. Obviously, whatever you're shooting, you need to kind of take into consideration, like, is it reflective? Is it uh, gonna soak up a bunch of light? Is it gonna block a bunch of light? And then Ted really wanted to kind of spice that up because even though that does look nice, there's more that you can do. So we added a slash of light. We warmed that up for a little bit of color contrast as well. So now we've got shadows, intensity of light, and color all playing to kind of break up the scene. And it's nice because it makes it feel more natural because, you know, sometimes in life there's lots of stray things happening. And sometimes those happy accidents are the best part of what you see. There you go. Now you see what that looks like. Um, now, though, we're going to do the actual rigging of how to get this set up, right? Yeah, so, absolutely. Casey, real quick, if we are setting up something like this with an iPhone and we want to get a beautiful top-down shot, we want our thing to look like chef's table, how do we do this? Where do we start? Um, I mean, first thing we're gonna do is just have something that we can attach this to. So we need to get something above the table. So either that be a stand with an offset arm, either be some sort of rigging system like across the table where you can attach it, or if you have something on the ceiling already, but that's pretty unlikely. So what we've got over here is a stand with a iPhone holder on it. And basically, the main thing about a stand like this and what you are looking for, if you are looking online to buy something like this, is you are looking for a boom stand. And a boom stand basically just means that the stand is going to have feet like this on the bottom and an arm that booms out. Now what's cool is that because we're shooting this on a phone, we don't need something super heavy duty. Do not put your DSLR on this. Do not put your Red or Alexa on this. And then likewise, after you've got that, you've got your clamp here. Yep. We're gonna throw a phone on here. And then I'm just going to walk in here, clamp that in. You wanna find a texture or something that looks nice that'll actually look good on camera. Uh, I don't know what that is. Maybe you're cooking, maybe it's a metal table or something, but uh, you wanna avoid things that are really reflective. Wood is a really nice texture because it has a lot of texture, a lot of kind of natural things that light will get caught into. Uh, and also just looks nice if you're doing this kind of hipster organic thing. So, uh, here's our shot, looks pretty good. Why don't you show us the book coming in? I see some modeling? Yeah. All right, you gotta watch the frame then. You tell me what to do. All okay. right, you ready? Yeah. Feels like the beginning of like a, a hipster camera fairy tale. See, now what needs to happen is one of these pictures needs to come to life and the camera zooms into it and starts, oh. the, starts the movie. <laughs> Did it work? Did I sell it? Yeah, for hand modeling, it's all about the, the natural details. So the little swirl, little it's, swirl. It, it makes it feel real. Oh! That's like a full story. With the bonus! Okay, here we go. This is significantly better than most things I film on my iPhone. Yeah, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is pretty darn good. $10, $15 for the clamp, $10, $15 for the stand. Yeah, maybe 30, 30 bucks. 30 to 40 bucks, easy. But we are not just doing this with a phone. Uh, if you were trying to shoot something like this with a DSLR, you don't want to trust it, some plastic thing like uh, this. No, that's insane. That it's a horrible be idea. So. Beyond using this plastic stand here, if you're trying to shoot something with a little nicer quality, yeah. uh, what else can we use? Um, I think the main thing to go to is some dedicated grip equipment that's meant for these kinds of things. And I would say a C-stand, maybe a triangulated one, would be your best option. All I've done is I've taken the regular arm out of the top gobo head. I feed that arm through the gripping head of another arm. 
and just lock that in to keep it simple. Okay. Put this top arm back in here. You want to make sure always that your knuckle, of course, is on the right, which means that if this does pull down, which again, you have two supports now, it'll tighten this actual knuckle as you're going down. So this is where we run into a problem. Thankfully, all these arms, when you buy them in sets, have a gobo head on the other side, mm -hmm. but there's nothing for it to grab onto here. So what we'll use is a <coughs> Cardellini or a Mafer or any other type of clamp that we can have a baby pen attachment onto. And right here, I of course have this. What do you know? Da -da -da -da. <coughs> ba -ba -dum. This real quick is a Cardellini clamp, so I'm gonna take this Cardellini. The Cardellini literally just comes here, sandwiches onto the actual stand itself. And what's cool about these Cardellinis or Mathelinis is that they have this little baby pin here. So that baby pin is perfect for, what do you know, attaching on another little knuckle here. So yeah, so I'll just lean that back a little bit just to get in here. And if you keep things loose, it's pretty easy to move it around. Yep. I mean, you can totally do this with just one C-stand and just one arm, and it will work, but I promise you, you will notice that if anything happens on the floor, if you walk too hard, if you bump the stand, this will shake, and it'll continue to shake for quite a while. It's just way more secure. So, how are you rigging that little mounting point onto a camera, though? Yeah, so we've got a regular quarter 20 attachment, so what we've done is we've gotten a little, what are these, like $8? Yeah, those are cheap. It's just cheap. Just a baby pin with a quarter 20 on it. They usually are pretty long, so you can do different things. I've just put a couple nuts on this one, so it snugs up nice to a camera and then we're just going directly into this guy here. We'll set this up. Do not forget, big leg goes over the load. Otherwise you might have this thing knocking over and toppling over people. Also sandbag the big leg, don't forget that too. So we're gonna walk this in and yep. you wanna do the honors? Yeah, absolutely. Let's do this. Of course, you know, I can't get my beautiful hand modeling hands roughed up by all this grip work. Casey, I have work to do. <laughs> That's why people like me exist. Of course, of course. To to move around all <laughs> to, the to do the to do the manual labor. <laughs> Don't forget, when you're doing something like this, you have to have a way to actually see the image. So a lot of the time, a lot of these DSLRs will have their screen like this. And this is fine, but sometimes when you're shooting over a piano or something, or you're trying to shoot a flat lay and you're laying on the floor, that can be really hard to see this screen. So sometimes you can flip it out and that'll be enough, you can see it. But if you want an even better way to really make sure you're seeing the image, plug in something like an external monitor. Okay, so we got our image. Okay, so now right. I just need to fine tune the position. So when you're picking a lens for something like this, you're gonna to try to find something that can capture the entire frame. But if you're using too long of a lens, then you need to get the camera super high. It makes things even very difficult. If you have to bring the camera too close, you're using a wide angle lens to capture the scene. Now things can be distorted, they can look a little weird. So it's nice to find a nice neutral size lens, something like in the you know, high 20s, mid 30s. So like right now we're like on a 26 millimeter. We zoomed in a bit, but this is nice. Ready? Yeah, let's do it. Now I can watch the image, Casey. Yeah. I don't even need you here. I can just go home. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, that's pretty groovy. I, I might like that, yeah. try to adjust this guy a bit more to get more glint off this lens. Yep. This is the joy of product shots. <laughs> You're doing it on purpose. I already I'm can not. tell. I can it's tell. <laughs> That's great. And then that is your dose, right? Looking good. Yeah. And before we move on, I want to talk to you real quick about Storyblocks, who is behind some of the most wonderful content that you've seen throughout basically all of our videos. Seriously, you can pretty much find any piece of footage that you want, like all these shots of people cutting steaks. Now, on top of that, they have over 500,000 4K and HD video clips at their disposal. So they also have background videos and After Effects templates for motion graphics, which means that if we needed to update our nameplate graphic, it would look a little bit something like this. So make sure you explore all these royalty-free assets by heading over to storyblocks.com slash IndieMogul and gain unlimited downloads for a starting membership of just $16.58 a month. So thank you to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. And now back to the episode. All right, for people that want to rig heavier cameras, something like a RED, an Alexa, an FX9, uh, there are a lot of ways to do this. There's a ton. There's a ton yeah. of ways to do this one. And honestly, if you're spending, you know, 20, 30K plus on your camera, 
you probably can afford to do a lot of different ways. You can do a goal post using two stands. You could use a bunch of things. So for people out there that want to rig kind of a heavier camera system, what have you been using? So recently I've been using the Matthews Max Mini. It's a single person kind of overhead menace arm. You can use it for a lot of things. Typically use it for lighting, but you can also use it for cameras as well if you have the right accoutrements. Okay, sounds good. So let's get that set up and get that rolling. Ready? Yeah. So it works by having a kind of a built-in triangulation already. Okay. So this is really easy to use for a single person. Same thing as before, we're gonna go grab a grip head, add that on, and then instead of a baby pin to quarter 20, which would probably just tear right out of a heavier camera. Yes, do not use your quarter 20 on your super big heavy camera to that little point trying to hold your super heavy camera. Not a good idea. I am putting on a safety chain. A safety chain is basically a super simple metal chain here. It's going to rig to the actual stand that you're rigging it onto, to the actual camera system, or usually a light that you're rigging it onto. Just make sure that if everything goes wrong or the wind topples it over or something, that it will actually stay onto the stand and won't fall and hit the ground. So, now that we're shooting this on more of a kind of cinema camera here, let's do this. Kaboom. Again. Oh, wow. I missed, ooh. Barely. Woo. Enjoy that. Give you a flip. Oh, that's a cool frame. Look at that. Getting thirsty. Oh man. Hmm. I'm gonna drink a little coffee. <sighs> Didn't actually drink anything. That was just a sound effect. Put that back down. Flip one more page. I hope it's a good one. Oh, it is a good one. There you go. Oh, 10, nine. Now that's too long of a countdown. Now we're gonna close it up. Actually wow. quite nice. Wow. Nailed it. All right. I kind of want to go home and make the same thing. It looks pretty good, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, for the people out there that recreated the commercial shot that we did a couple weeks ago, uh, you guys rock. We saw your videos online. Thank you for tagging us in them. Super duper cool. Uh, and I hope some people, honestly, you guys are more than welcome to go and recreate this kind of shot at home. Uh, other than that, there you go. You now have three different ways to do this. Casey, if people have questions, can they ask you them? Yeah, absolutely. You guys can hit me up on Instagram at mcbro underscore FTW, and you can go ahead and put them in the comments of this video. I try to monitor those as often as I can. Right on. So leave a comment if you've got a question on your own setup or your own overhead rig. We'll be down there to answer those as well. Also, thank you again to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. Stop paying too much for high quality B-roll by going over to storyblocks.com slash IndieMogul. Uh, but other than that, Andy Mobile, that is it for me. I'm Ted. Thank you so much for watching. And of course, we will catch you guys in the next one. I'm having like fever dreams right now because one of my first jobs was uh, I shot a piano piece for the MoMA and it was like a little, they, they didn't pay me a lot, but it was just like a hands down. They wanted to see the piano keys moving. And uh, I did not do a triangulated C stand and because of that. The thing was just wobbling. I think oh. it was the air conditioning it was yeah, blowing. Been. Yeah, that's and it just made the camera wobble just a little bit. And I had to try to fix that in post. And this is like pre-like pre warp, warp stabilizer, stabilizer yeah. looking really good. So.